we do a roll call and then I can. All right. Okay. Member O'Neill. Uh, here. Member DeVar. Oh, yeah. Member Landry. Which present? Member Padilla. Here. Member Platt. Here. Rames. Expectedly. Gigliotti. Expectedly. Chair Eldred. Present. Thank you. All right. Um, we missed one, didn't we? Chuck. I got Chuck. Ken. Ken Platt. Oh, and Chambers. Sorry. Um, He's not expected today. I, I would like to take a moment and thank very much our host. Well, I think I just went over the housekeeping. I'm Diane Martinez, city council member here in Emeryville. This is our mayor, Scott Donahue. He's also oh, my right. alternate oh, on EBCE. And um, the doors, obviously, you all got in. <laughs> the restroom's right over this way. And the Wi-Fi is <coughs> COE underscore guest. And welcome, all of you. for Thank you for um, visiting our city and including us on your road tour of Alameda County. Thank you. Thank you. And, and thank you both for being here. It's actually uh, really important to us as a committee that our uh, board representatives see the process that we go through before we bring any recommendation to you. Um, and actually being here and being part of that is huge. Um, first, uh, public comments. Um, Victor, so this is reserved for items not on the agenda. If anybody would like a slip, they are right there. Victor? Oh, thank you. So, <coughs> uh, many of you know me. Victor is with the IBEW, uh, International Representative. I want to congratulate the CEO of this been brought on board. So, uh, look forward to. Uh, working with you from the IBW perspective, we're the union that represents the construction workers that have been building the wind turbines up in the Alpine, and as well as many other um, renewable energy uh, systems throughout the state. And um, I apologize for my absence at different meetings. We've been very busy uh, giving a lot the wildfires that took place up in uh, uh, the northern part of the state. The, if there's any doubt about climate change and the need to lower greenhouse gas, uh, impacts. Uh, it's very clear from our members that lost houses, uh, our members that were working 24-7 to restore power uh, to many of the jurisdictions, uh, as well as other union members who were the first responders. Um, we uh, have a, a deep commitment to our communities that we live in, and um, the efforts to uh, make good on the promises that the uh, EBCD was founded upon is very important to the IGW and uh, our labor movement. So with that in mind, uh, I would ask, uh, uh, I had a quick talk with uh, Nick Gelati. I understand that he actually gave a letter explaining why he could not participate in the uh, interview that took place uh, regarding the RFP process. And I would ask if that was uh, made public I don't know if it was made public it at was the, in the fiscal I don't know if it was made public at the board meeting. Mm -hmm. um, if it was, that's great. Mm -hmm. I think the integrity of that process for uh, RFPs, contracts, all of that process through the year is very important. And I think that uh, Nick's inability to do that as a small business owner, uh, I think is an important message for going forward. Uh, this process has to have integrity. Uh, so, <coughs> With the vote of the CAC at the last uh, meeting, I know it was a very divided vote over the uh, RFP to reject all bids uh, and then to go with the East Bay Mud, this particular proposal. Uh, the Labor Council and others strongly supported uh, what was felt to be a strong commitment to impacted workers uh, as these transitions are being made. So, Recently, PG announced the closing of the call center in Stockton, affecting up to eight workers. And so, as these transitions are taking place, the commitment of the uh, labor movement and to other uh, advocates for a just transition. A just transition is not just uh, a nice phrase, but it means that the impacted workers, as we go through these transitions, uh, their 
jobs, their livelihoods, uh, which impacts the communities, uh, have to be addressed. And so as we transition to a new energy authority, uh, we would strongly advise that those principles and commitments that we made and the founding principles for this new authority be very mindful that we keep uh, those commitments and not just have them as an energy promise uh, that we see many, uh, that we see happen in other uh, CCAs across the state. And this was supposed to be a different uh, energy authority and CCA. So those are my comments. Thank, Thank you. Uh, Kevin, flight? Uh, I think I had item 7. Alright, one. Oh. Or? No, I just read it backwards. Alright. Not sure good. Um, Matt? Cool. What is it? Golden. Golden. Yeah. Wait. So I want to introduce myself. I'm, I'm Matt Golden. I'm the CEO of Cutting Over Energy Efficiency. And, uh, wanted to bring an opportunity to the table for an EPIC grant that uh, is the California Energy Commission has presented, which I think is really well tuned for the efforts of the CCA. It's an opportunity <coughs> of up to $10 million per team. Um, and, the op and the opportunity is to utilize these funds to both implement energy efficiency in, the, in our territory and provide local jobs and support, but also create a platform that can allow us to scale all of the good ideas that develop within this community. Um, the, so the, op the opportunity is to fundamentally is to implement a platform for energy efficiency that uses smart meter data that's available to the CCA to measure the impact of energy savings that are being done on buildings in the community and move to a model where we're rewarding outcomes based on measured results and really create a market-based platform for local companies to deliver services to customers. Um, we're talking to Nick and some other team members in this on the technology front and also uh, within the CCA. Uh, we feel like this is an opportunity to leverage state funds to put in place this platform, um, access meter data that is actually legally available but not yet fully in possession of the CCA to actually understand what, is that, what are the load impacts within the community, um, and take very much a, a performance-based, market-based approach to energy efficiency where rather than figuring out precisely what types of interventions and how to reach customers, we can actually set up a system where as a, as a CCA we pay for the outcomes that are delivered and take a much more agnostic approach. And the opportunity is to work with community groups to identify where are the target markets that make the most sense, both in terms of where the opportunity is, where there are market companies in the market that can serve those, those categories, and that also makes sense in terms of our priorities as a community in terms of serving underserved communities um, and other important labor and other questions uh, about how we want, see, what we want to see this develop. And so the, we're under a very tight time frame. Um, there's about really three and a half weeks to deliver wow. the RFP. Um, they didn't give us a heck of a long time. It took a little while to kind of connect with Nick and others and just identify the opportunity. But we do think we could deliver a proposal um, that makes sense into the CEC. And we think because of their interest in supporting community power efforts, um, but they'd be really open to the sort of RFP. Um, and the important thing in what we're proposing and thinking about is it's not, it's creating a platform where these solutions can emerge, but does not presuppose technologies, businesses, or even those specific categories. So I think the first phase would be actually understanding the potential and working with community groups to identify where we want to focus these efforts um, and then put in place this technology, which is all open source. Currently, it's being used by pg e SMUD, and also marine clean energy and gear savings and measure results. Um, so we just think this is a unique opportunity. That, that, um, it is a, it's a very tight turn, um, but the, upper, the potential and the amount of funding that not only can be used for the kind of research and development of the platform, but also to fund these projects directly. Can I, can I ask you a, just a clarifying question? We talked a little bit about this, but just. Is this public comment? Oh, good. Thank you. Do you have presentation cards? I absolutely do. Uh, we can read it a bit, but, um, yes. Al, you're next. Um, I put my card in because uh, Jessica had not arrived, but, um, yet. Um, so, Jessica, are you prepared to talk a little bit about, I'll just introduce, you know, a topic and then maybe in the, uh, in the formation of, uh, of our energy program, we had a steering committee. 
you know, that led up until the time that the report was uh, created. And that steering committee really considered had a lot of public uh, representatives of both uh, electives, for those who were here electives and community members who were part of the steering committee. But basically all RFPs and, uh, and job descriptions and things like that would regularly come before the steering committee for feedback and advice and input. And we've seen a situation now where uh, the agency is formed where that process of input onto RFPs and job descriptions and things like that are sort of now housed in the CEO position. But we think it was a healthy process uh, for these things to have some public scrutiny and to get public input. So I think uh, uh, Jessica, maybe, I don't know if you're up next, you can take it from there. We had a proposal. Uh, to make uh, around that, not for discussion tonight, but in terms of what would be done in the future. Thank you. Um, yeah, I had uh, two different things actually, but I think Al just spoke to um, our concerns, East Bay Power Alliance concerns around um, not bringing RFPs to the community advisory committee <coughs> for input. Um, and we, w we do want to have a process moving forward around that. Um, and as, as I'll mention, um, I think a good example is like um, the banking that's on the agenda and you know the other, um, the other jobs that are being put out. Um, we'd like to weigh in on that. And in addition, to add to that is also um, the kind of campaign, the PR through Circle Point. Um, we would also like to see the community um, be able to weigh in on that. I did see, um, we did see some of the, um, I guess the PowerPoint that Circle Point had shared um, a few weeks ago um, with some logos and um, some campaigns with images of people. Um, and we really, really felt like it was misrepresenting the goals of the program. It was really focused on cheaper rates, um, you know, save the environment, but I think we have a greater opportunity to do more education on the value of this program, um, that it would be creating jobs, that it would be improving health, it would be improving um, circulating wealth in our community as opposed to money going out of the community. And it's it really has um, innovative goals that we need to <laughs> that we need to incorporate in that campaign, um, and and so that's something we want to emphasize. And in order to to not miss the point, if these things were to come to the community advisory committee for our input, then we'd be able to weigh in and and describe <coughs> the program as we have been designing it for the last X amount of years. So I just wanted to throw that out. And I have a couple comments about the circle point item. So that actually did go out to the CAC. That was the focus group. So it's not a final product. It's just a focus for the items that we're being talked about. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and then I actually, we have a question for you now. Uh, Nick wanted to ask a question on public comment. Um, is there a process for doing that or? He can ask a question. You just can't form a recommendation. So it's just information you're listening to. Okay, go for it. We're going to well, try and keep this as brief as possible because we have a pretty good one tonight. Are there any other public comments? Nope. Okay. Um, when you, you raise this, one thing that I, I wanted to get a better handle on is um, in the application, there's not a definition of what the projects are. Right? So it's not like, oh, we're going to pursue this project. It's there's a process, there's, it defines the process for selecting the program. So if you want to say, we want to have a community-driven engagement process around the programs that we want to pursue, that's what you would put in the proposal? Like, I just want to understand like, how you would define that in the proposal. Right. So the first phase of the proposal, as we have discussed, in this, uh, would be actually an engagement process where we look at really three things in the way, which is the technical potential, the uh, market opportunity, and then with community organizations, where really what our goals are and where we can, where we have the biggest impact. And so, the platform kind of the approach is actually a very 
general platform that rewards outcomes. And so the, the first step in this process would be to look at all of these factors and identify where we can do energy efficiency in this community that would have the biggest impact on kind of all of those fronts. It would be valuable as a capacity resource and reduce resource adequacy costs potentially for this organization, but also serve the community. Um, so the first kind of phase of this process would, would be to get the data and engage the community to identify where we wanted to target all of these efforts. Um, and then we could actually go ahead and encourage those in the retrofits. Yeah, yeah. So what would be your role in this whole so we have been providing, we, we've been actually developing this open source software tool, the Energy, California Energy Commission originally funded it. Um, so our role would actually be the kind of intermediate software platform that, that acquires the, the smart meter data and tracks the signals. Um, and become, and so we would actually, we're kind of between, and it's really a tool of the CCA to identify what savings are coming from these projects and to be able to pay companies who would be doing the work on buildings in the community so we have to retain your services in order to so, yeah. submit an RFP or to? Yeah, I mean, as part of kind of pulling this together, we would provide a SAS, a software as a service platform that acquires the data and does its analytics, which is similar to what we're doing with marine clean energy and some of some of the others. The software itself is totally open source, and it's actually licensed with no restrictions. Um, and so we do have folks that are, we're, you can run it locally without cost. We provide essentially an enterprise version of that at low cost. Um, that has security in the database and all of that stuff. To um, the bulk of the funds, to a very large extent, would be going into actual projects. Um, we're actually fundamentally a very small component of this particular project. Really quick, and um, Barbara, you have parts to pass out yeah. um, 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 Just to let people know um, that we are having a 10 year anniversary Thursday night, um, and Barbara will pass out information. 10 years from okay. the Local okay. Clean Energy Alliance, and the next day we're having our Clean Power Healthy Communities Conference um, all day Friday. So I just wanted to make sure everybody knew about that and have that information. Thank you. All right. Uh, is there any other final comment? Because we had some folks walk in late. Anybody else want to happen? All right. Um, approval of minutes from October 30th, 2017. That was posted online um, on Thursday. We had them physically last week. Has anybody not had a chance to take a look at them? All right. We'll I'll try and figure out how to get paper minutes here for people if it's helpful. Um, uh, somebody move to approve the minutes? I, I, I do have um, a question of, about the minutes. I um, didn't bring everything tonight because, uh, you know, a couple of friends and then get everything wet. Um, but I want to clarify just a point of uh, uh, procedure. Um, when I read the minutes, uh, um, does the chair motion, do you actually make motions? Yes, and we clarified that before I made the motion. You, you can make motions? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, but you only vote when there's a top. I can vote at any point. I try, I personally try and step back. Um, because that, like in a, four, in a four to three split, <coughs> the four to three or three to three, then that, that gets to be a little, I mean, if it's three to three, then, um, yeah. That which will be part of the chair report. Yeah, do you have a question? Well, on I the think we need to. I think we need to look at that. You know, in general, because that's not necessarily the way that um, you know. That's not my to be honest with you. But do do we have any issue with the chair voting or making motions? Not in this setting. No. Okay. The chair can make a motion. It would have to be seconded. It's not just the chair makes a motion right. and it just runs. It has to be seconded. And, and she can vote even even if there's not a, uh, right. a top. Right. So technically she should be voting each time. It was just information that was given to her. She has the choice to not vote or to vote to break a tie. So it was just the language in what was presented. My experience has been that the chair always votes. Okay. 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 
Thank you. Uh, all right, so is there a motion to approve the minutes? I, I do a motion, I, and I just request just a, a little bit more detail, especially in contentious items like that number 10 was in this in these um, in this meeting, because, and so i just like to see a little bit more discussion of that. So with that, we are moving to a summary action where it's just the recommendation and the action. The detail is in the video. We do post the video, and it's live streamed the board is live streamed at the time as well as posted after and the CAC meetings are posted after so they would have the audio file as their more detailed minutes and that is completely covered by the Brown Act. Yeah. I know it makes yeah, it hard because yeah, it's easier to have yeah, them yeah, understand and <laughs> it's just in terms of... Yeah. And yeah. they would bring a copy of what we brought to the board which will also be in the chair report. Okay. Um, I motion to approve. The, great. Is there a second? Yeah, second. Uh, any opposition to this motion? Any abstentions? Okay. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. All right. Uh, motion carries with abstention from Monica. All right. Chair report. So, um, last meeting we had the unfortunate situation where we had a really hard stop time, and uh, during the biggest discussion item that we had, uh, we ended up with a 3-3 tie, which I split in favor. And I said at that meeting that I would contact um, everybody. Uh, I would send an email, and I would try and figure out that place where we were able to find something to agree on. As I did not receive um, enough uh, clarification votes on that, um, the motion was turned in as recorded. I do have a copy of that. That was also handed out on Wednesday. If anybody would like to see it at, after I'm done talking, um, then go for it. And uh, But that was also handed out um, at the meeting. Um, so to clarify, um, the vote was four in favor, um, Devaro, Neal, Platt, and then myself, and three opposed, Landry, um, Giuliotti, and Riggs. Um, Rames' biggest thing was that he just wanted to add some words that said the process had been followed and there was no um, new public opposition um, and was otherwise in support of the motion. Um, and um, Nick Giuliotti had submitted his letter and he wanted to have added to this motion that he wanted stronger wording around the concerns among the CAC. Um, and otherwise would have supported that this was in fact the process followed and then um, I did not hear back from Landry. So uh, when we went, I did explain that process. There is audio of that. If anyone would like to take a look at what was turned in, can hand this around. Um, also highlighted, actually turned it in, highlighted what the vote was and who, where everything was. Um, we definitely did speak to that. Uh, the <coughs> meeting had really one agenda item, um, which was, uh, is that, am I on the right one? Not on the right one. Um, uh, what we looked at was the, was the proposal and um, it did pass, what was that vote? Mm -hmm. What was the vote of the board? Um, um, for that item, it was unanimous. Yeah. For that item, it was eleven zero, zero. Um, and then the so it wasn't that. Um, I have the wrong minutes in front of me. Um, so that, like, primarily, that was what would what had happened. Thank you. Um, no, no, I have that. One. Uh, but that that was the meeting was this process and um, we explained where we were the board went with it um, and uh, really stressing that we needed a very clear RFP process that we needed that to happen that it needed to be outlined um, they came back and um, and actually came up with a bunch of recommendations for how to more include the community and the CAC members. Um, there was many actual concrete dedications um, and steps outlined to greater transparency and inclusion. Um, and overwhelmingly, it was heard that this 
body and the public who come so very well informed and so incredibly dedicated uh, need to have input in this process since this is why we are building um, this this energy authority that we are doing something different and that it is incredibly difficult and that we do need to have the public input so um, I I felt that the board had really heard and respected the recommendations of the CAC last time, that it was an expensive process, that it was all those things, and they did it. Um, thank you again for stepping in um, as our fellow worker was not able uh, or willing to do so, um, and for very good reasons that are to his right. Um, that letter was submitted uh, to the board that is part of um, record and we did go over it at our meeting. Um, so that is what happened there. Do people have questions on on that? Yeah. Um, and I'm going to go back and um, uh, review the uh, tapes. Um, but my um, one of the things I wanted to ask you is because uh, I got an email and. Uh, 1021 went on strike, so I was, <laughs> I was, I was um, at another, um, I wasn't able to, whatever. So, um, so relative to this, uh, did, when we made that motion, do we make a motion to, uh, I thought we made a motion just to reject all bids. But we did we make in that motion, and I guess Stephanie would have taken the official minutes to reject bids and to authorize uh, SMIC, or was it? That is what it was, and those okay. are from her okay. minutes. Okay, so the, we did we did both. Okay, okay. yeah. And uh, my concern would be that um, I would never want. Uh, to displace any uh, Oh yeah, and that actually, thank you for bringing that up. Um, so in addition to that, um, Hunter Stern came and spoke at the meeting about, uh, which was the first that I'd heard about um, 60, 65 workers who are being displaced. Hunter did clarify that it wasn't actually because of this, that this is a thing that is happening. Um, but we did ask for and at least saw visual recognition of the fact that those workers who are going to be displaced, not actually because of community choice, but who are going to lose their work, um, have uh, like that as we're building these policies and doing hiring, that we look first at the workers who are being displaced from this industry. So thank you very much. That was actually another thing, and they all they were like, "Yep, that was well. So um, that was good. Uh -huh. Along those lines, just as a, it's a plug, there's a one of the we'll get to it in the local development business plan. There's a chapter, there's a draft document around workforce development, and mm -hmm. that point is addressed there. But that's a would be a great opportunity when you're considering public comment on that section to highlight that point around displacement and policies that East Bay may want to put in place to ensure that going forward when we're doing things we very clearly a process for inviting or engaging with um, switch workers. And Dan, do you want to add anything to that? No. Okay. <laughs> I don't have anything to add. Thank you. All right. Um, is there any other questions on that item or vote? But, but oh, and the wholesale the, the wholesale ground. thing was pulled out completely. Right. That is also another agenda. Yes, if there was a, um, oh, the question of our vote last time? No, just um, the chair report, the, because what was covered at that meeting was predominantly that item. Oh. Um, I'm just wondering if anyone else has questions on that report. Oh. Um, I didn't see the letter from Nick. Is that something that was public record? Can you yeah, and we can get you a copy of it for sure. Oh, okay. Can you just say essentially what the issue was? Um, he said that because the process is so unbelievably flawed, actually, I would hate to paraphrase him. Do we have a copy that we can get? He submitted it in addition to what the what this committee was recommending. Yeah, he submitted it to us saying that he could not sit on um, the review committee. Okay, as not to the board. Uh, no, no, no. To us, he just oh, okay. has a time okay. commitment uh, thing. Okay. It's, okay. it's because he can't be here until so late. Uh, but the reason that he couldn't sit on the selection committee was because 
um, a, a very well articulated letter that I misunderstood. I thought he submitted to the board a position contrary to our position that was voted out. But I misunderstood. That's okay. But he did sort of. Um, he said that he couldn't participate in the next process because of a strong. Um, I, and again, I don't want to paraphrase him because he was articulate and accurate and can best represent himself. Um, but I will be happy to get you a copy of that letter. Okay, I'm just asking a process question. So if this if this group has a motion, then the, then the recommendation from this group carries forward to the yes. board. It's not that one of us individually can go to the board and say, we disagree with what we voted out and no. here's, that's not what could happen. Yeah. Oh, that's what, so this is helpful for me to clarify too, because this, okay. we spent a good chunk of the last meeting trying to get all on the same page of how we would handle this agreement and present whatever was the final vote. And he brought a letter to our meeting. I wasn't aware of if he brought it to the board or if he... I mean, as a public person, I can go to the board meeting and say this is my individual opinion, but I'm not right. representing the, right. the committee here. Right. Do you want to do that clarification? Oh, I'm sorry. I quickly so um, the, it's it's much about the the process that we talked about at the last meeting mm -hmm. about uh, when this board or when this committee makes a recommendation, we are supposed to bring that recommendation and articulate that. It's why I try very hard to explain when there is a split vote, what the issues were, uh, but what we are doing is bringing that particular we are bringing that recommendation as a body. And individually, we are not, in fact, supposed to say, but I disagree with it. So I've gone and argued positions that I voted against because that was the position of our committee. Um, and so I argued those things. Um, so my understanding is that we are not supposed to be submitting things. Um, well, I mean, as a public person, as anybody a public has a right to go to a, And that was quite right. So as a public person, yes. But, um, but not as a representative of the school. Exactly, which is what was happening. Okay. okay. You're presenting uniformly again. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, and on that, as uh, as Nick has had some, uh, his work schedule changed, and so now he's got some conflicts, he's going to maintain his position on this committee, but his position as vice chair is not one that he can do. For example, I'll be gone next week, uh, or uh, December 6th, and so the vice chair will need to attend the meeting or we won't have representation, and he can't do that. Um, so there will be an election of vice chair. I would like to move this agenda item to later in the meeting as we are still hoping that Chuck shows up and potentially Ken Chambers, um, but but definitely at least Chuck, yeah. Um, on that item, um, couldn't, you, uh, couldn't you appoint somebody temporarily to, you know, fill in, um, Next week, or, um, I think that's the vice chair's you job, you know, because so the vice uh, chair would just fill in too. Yeah, you you know, and then we could first because um, um, I think that the election of the vice chair uh, probably would need to be um, moved because we have three people here. Well, that's um, why we're that's why we're waiting to the end of the meeting because the yeah. other two of them will uh, at least two of them will show up. Yeah. So. Uh, but I, I don't think you have to elect someone necessarily tonight to have somebody sitting for you. Um, we are gonna, we're gonna, we agendized it last meeting. We, uh, we, when he stepped, or we, when he stepped down, he sent a resignation effective immediately thing. We will have eight of the nine people, um, and I very much hope that Ken Chamber shows up. Um, but we do need to get somebody else into this position. Um, because it's a huge amount of work and I'm going to be on the East Coast and so we'll, we will move somebody into the vice chair position. Um, and I wish Nick could do it because he's fantastic, but um, he resigned and so we will respect that. Um, I will, we rarely have all of us. So, um, so we're going to move five to later, ideally once we have as many people as we can get. Um, the the CAC procedures on item six, we don't have any public comment on that. Um, there's two things here. One is that um, at each agenda, uh, each meeting that we have, there will be a CAC procedures um, standing thing. So if there's questions that you have about how things work, um, 
then we can address that at this po at that point. Um, we do need to address uh, like at least a rotational note taker uh, because it's a, also a huge amount of work and uh, Megan has been fulfilling that role pretty awesomely, but that's a thing that should be shared. Um, and uh, we will be hosting, when we get our new vice chair, we'll be hosting some trainings on how to do things, because like, I haven't done this before, and board letters are things that I didn't know about, but when there's items, we have to write letters and submit them to the board and do all this kind of stuff, so it's an opportunity for our personal and professional development. If you guys want to know how to do these things and are willing to help with some of that work, it would be fantastic. So those will be made available to whoever wants it so we can learn how to do these things. Um, so now I would ask if people have questions like Monica had about the process that we use or our procedures go for it. Well, um, um, I'd, like to, uh, uh, I'd like to clarify the note-taking position mm -hmm. because um, I would think, because we have somebody here that's taking minutes, uh, you know, any, anyone can, I mean, I take them, so anybody can augment their own personal notes, but um, I don't, I don't see, I don't understand necessarily uh, why we would be taking notes and the executive exactly. assistant. So the, because her notes are not always available in time for me to create a report and get it submitted um, when things are very busy, which I have to say, they've been very busy, um, that sometimes there is a delay on those items. So these are not official minutes. They are things that we have as tools to work from in creating uh, summaries and writing up things. So we try and get the exact wording of the motion down, but we always do verify that with the exact wording part. Um, but it, it assists in the creation of the chair report for the board meeting. It's really, really important not to recreate things from memory, but actually to have running minutes. So. <coughs> but yeah, they're not official. Do you have a question? Um, no. Okay. I'm, I'm, no. I'm, I'm, I think and, and this is an informational yeah. item, and I think that makes sense. And I, you know, I think we, it would be good to rotate that if we could. And and if if possible, I don't, is that something you can share with the group, or we're going to be violating the Brown Act if we share? Those are your notes. notes. Those are okay. Mm -hmm. So we can, and you have a Google Doc that you've created, and we can. Yeah. Sure. Those. Okay. What I want to avoid, though, is everyone staring at the computer screen and not <laughs> participating in the. All right. So, do we have a volunteer for next week? Oh, and you also want to avoid. You cannot change your motion if you've made a motion at the meeting later in discussion. You cannot change it. Right. Like you have to prevent that if you're sharing it. So it would probably be best not to share it to more than half of your forum. Like I wouldn't yeah. even share we, it to a forum. We pretty much do it with one person, um, just so that I can see them to prepare the report. Uh, but do we have a volunteer for next week and we can see you next In two weeks. In two weeks. Don't tell me. Sorry, two weeks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. And so then we will send we'll send information out when we start to do the this is how you do things. Did you have a comment on this? I, <laughs> so I submitted that because I had no idea what this item was because it wasn't in back in the discussion about it. I thought it might have been policies for East Bay Community Energy. Nope, that's what we're going to just have to do. Uh, we'll put that right there. You're on item nine. Thank you. All right. I have um, one procedural question. Yes. One procedural bit. Have we established when we're going to meet on a regular basis? Yes. The Monday before the third Wednesday of the month, uh, which is not always the third Monday, but the Monday before the third Wednesday of the month, I would love people to entertain moving it to 6.30 instead of 7 just because it runs so late, but I don't know that that's an option. Um, and then when the board sets a meeting for the first Monday, uh, or the first Wednesday of the month, then it will also be the Monday prior to that, um, which last month was on November 30th as opposed to the first Monday, right? So it's the Monday before the first Wednesday. <coughs> 
Um, and right now, they're hoping for once a month, but it looks like twice a month is what it looks like. Pretty, at least for a little bit. Does that seem right? Mm -hmm. December will have one. December, December will have one. one. Which, yeah. the sixth, and yeah. that's it? Right, yeah. So, so just got me. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, so the holidays will get weird, but we'll have But then I think it's pretty, possible. like, the, that first Wednesday of the new year, which is pretty early, I think, so. Yeah, it's... Cool. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll post that. Um, so, but just so you know, there will be a CAC procedures item on every agenda if you want it. So if you have procedures that you want clarified, that you can submit them. If there's questions about how we're working for either the public or the members or staff or a CEO or anything else, that is a time to bring it for discussion, right? Yeah. I just want to go on record that um, I'm uncomfortable with, um, you know, when one does, you know, a report, you know, and I understand when you're chairing, it's difficult perhaps to take notes at the same time. Because uh, I've chaired and I and, and I you know had to take notes, so so I understand that. But we do have an official note, you know, official recorder here, and so um, I I I really think it's um, it adds another layer to the process, which I don't think is um, um, necessary. As we do look at the minutes, we review minutes. And, and again, they're and not always available, but your, uh, yeah, your so comment has been entered right, into right. So I, yeah. So going to the... Oh. Yeah, go. I just want to add my support to more, to Ken's point about more elaboration in the minutes to disagreement, because that sounded like where we, and, and, and if we don't agree on that, that's fine, but it sounded like that's where we landed in the last meeting, which made people feel comfortable in terms of you know, if we disagree, then it's and it's fine not to, to speak in the public comment and say why we disagree because it's at least a summary of the dissenting point is in the is in the minutes. So as opposed to the, the minutes just having the summary recommendation, particularly for a four three and I was in the four, mm -hmm. but particularly for the four three vote, it would make sense to have a sentence that summarized the opposing view in those minutes. Um, That's a small question. Mm -hmm. We can review it. Like there's other things associated with the minutes and why we don't go into the who said what, who said that. It's because it's also an accuracy thing. Yeah. So I need to clarify something because I'm a little confused with your comment. So um, I thought we were just taking, you know, motions and you know votes and all that. Uh, are we now adding, uh, which I mean, I guess it's okay because it's transparency, but are we adding to the minutes now why we're disagreeing? That's generally not how it's done. Yeah, that's, it's, it'd be that's the my recommendation and the yeah. action. Yeah. And my goal would be to be able to present your agenda with the recommendations when you're viewing it so you know what you're actually going into to the meeting and then after the recommendation be there, your actual vote, who voted for what, and the motion versus what one group said, the other group. That's yeah, all that's, recorded in the recording. That's, that's my understanding. Mm -hmm. of it, um, that's being, you know. And I'm going to say that um, due to time, we're going to we're going to kind of scoot forward on this one. But you have the opportunity to submit. Just send an email to me and Stephanie that says I'd like to talk about this at the next meeting under CAC procedures, well, and we can do that. We'll do um, it now. I'll add that now. Cool. Um, so. Can volunteer to do functional minutes? I mean, just so the notes uh, yeah, remember, right? on at the, the next time. Third, yeah. third, 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 third. Um, local development business plan. We do have a public comment on that, and that's Kevin. Yeah. So um, most of you might recognize me. I've been around for the past two, two and a half years since the steering committee. Um, was in its early days. And so um, at that time, we decided to uh, build a business really around the UBCE and what the core values were and trying to incorporate those core values into my business. Um, and started Sun Walker, really focused on Alameda County and development, renewable energy, uh, and 
limited energy storage. And with that, uh, in 2015, we began developing the Livermore Community Solar Farm, which is a solar project on 32 acres in Livermore. And uh, with that, we've spent uh, quite a bit of money and quite a bit of time in that development over the past few years. Uh, to the point where in June of 2018, we will have a commercial operation date for our interconnection agreement with PG&E. Um, under the current scenario of the local development business plan, which uh, we have been uh, heavily involved in, at least in providing project data, uh, information on how much production we'll be able to provide for the next five years in regards to solar and energy storage, uh, as well as job creation, um, really focusing around union labor, uh, local procurement, equipment, all the equipment on the projects will be bought from in county suppliers, and then putting together educational programs. And now, which is probably the most exciting part for me, um, putting together a local ownership plan for low income residents. And so, uh, you know, having followed EBC over the past few years, you know, it's been very exciting, it's been troublesome at times, but, um, you know, I, I think with where we're at, uh, at least with the local development business plan, our commercial operation date in June is not achievable, which is based on the fact that today we don't have a power purchase agreement. And with the current scenario of having uh, the LDVP completed in April, um, it doesn't allow us to raise uh, the appropriate financing, put the structure together, hire the contractor, we will then hire the local union jobs uh, to build the project, which we should start construction in February. So, you know, that's, it's very close for us. It's right around the corner. And um, you know, we do have the ability to push out that date with pg e but we really get one chance with it. Otherwise, we drop back into the queue and we're two years out from where we were um, two years ago to today. So, um, I, I, I'm hoping maybe we could create a scenario where this local project with all the local attributes that was really built around um, PBCE and, and really the core values and you know us adopting those and helping, helping to evolve. Uh, maybe in creating a scenario where this project could be commissioned at that time and also celebrated. Uh, because I think you know, all the people in this room have done a lot of great work. Uh, I think we're going to have a great celebration on Thursday. But I hope that uh, we can have it, you know, an even bigger celebration to help with everybody in June at launch. So, thank you. Uh, and then, with all respect, we're going to remember to keep the comments to a maximum of three minutes. Uh, Victor. <coughs> thank you. The, um, the IBW and building trades, I had a meeting with my son, Walker, and uh, Supervisor Haggerty. Uh, a while back uh, around this project and just to reiterate that there that the developer <coughs> some offer has signed agreements to do um, the project with uh, the local building trades and the importance of PLA covered work is such that the training programs for uh, sustainable careers uh, has to be done uh, based off of projects that are done with union labor so for instance this this great facility here uh, was wired by IBW apprentices and journey. And that training transfers into careers that then move on to uh, future uh, households, generations. This would be one of the first CCAs to launch, quite frankly, with a local project, which has never been done before. We've always had promises of local projects, local jobs, local hire, uh, union jobs, and never fulfilled. And so, uh, our understanding is that with these agreements, with these commitments, it would then just take a commitment by the uh, uh, EBC board to sign a final purchase agreement, launch uh, with a project that would in fact uh, do what we have been trying to do uh, with this agency for so long, which is uh, fulfill the, the basic principles um, of local job, local hire, economic development, uh, training, so we stand in full support of this project. Mike, I think that's a question. Yes. So I would assume that any PPAs that are brought forward to the board or to this group would have been selected through some kind of solicitation process and not just based on vendors coming to us and saying, sign this contract. It has to go through some kind of open process, right? That is my uh, strong belief. 
again. So if you want to set your evaluation criteria to, to put 2018 right. PLA, I mean, there, we can have a discussion. But you know, okay. we haven't had an extended discussion yet about procurement procedures. That's something that we're actively starting to work through. Is what are the policies we as an agency want to set for determining when we sign power purchase agreements? Do we have a strong preference towards competitive solicitations, or do we want to allow for bilateral contracts in a non-competitive environment? Well, what so, kind of price premium are we willing to pay for those type of contracts? So we don't have a policy. You know, I would say, in general, it is good practice for an entity you know, to pursue competitive processes, particularly when we're dealing with public money that we're the stewards of. So that's something you're going to bring forward to this group and to the board as a process? Yeah. Yep. That's so on the agenda. Thank you. Thank you. It's back to the RFP open process right. and, and make sure we find And it's great to have a local project, and you know, timing is, I know, critical. And, you know, we'll have to get that going sooner than faster, so we can get a local project. Yep. Uh, yeah. uh, just to say here, I mean, uh, the notion that's being put forward is that at the time of launch, we actually have projects that are ready to go. Uh, without the notion that we have a fully worked out uh, procurement policy for five or ten years. And so I think part of what we talked about here is the notion that we have a limited, uh, uh, a limited commitment on the part of the program to a limited uh, uh, amount of development, you know, uh, that could be uh, put in place at the time of launch uh, without it being necessarily a long-term commitment or policy or whatnot, that it could be based on criteria uh, that, that the program sets up. But the notion is, is that we try to make some arrangement by which we can make a commitment that doesn't impact overall price of electricity or you know, long-term stuff, but does show a clear signal to the interest of the program for being able to move together you know, at launch uh, to get something going. So this is just a pitch for maybe trying to think of something that's a little bit like a one-off for the purposes that I mentioned. Yeah. Awesome. Um, just so you guys know, because I didn't, um, this is my fault, I did not write out a lot of uh, information on the agenda because it because it's all been very fast. Um, uh, under item nine, policy and procedure development, we'll be looking at some of the things that, that will be being brought to us and how to give input and all that kind of stuff, so that will be coming up on this agenda. Um, the LDVP item, here, which I should have written out and did not, um, is to um, is to say that the first deliverables uh, or the first drafts, very very clearly drafts on the local development business plan tasks one, three, and four, that some of those items have been posted online. Uh, that. The process that uh, of the transparency and inclusion and stuff has uh, that there has been a process set out. Um, I would like Nick to go through um, that. We had two of uh, two of our committee members and a community member sit in on that um, that initial process. I want to make sure that people are clear on the framing for what this is that what they are, are creating in these first deliverables um, are not in fact final products. Like they are, uh, like uh, the solar siting survey is like, here's all the places we might be able to do solar. Here's the total potential if it could get there. Now we haven't done feasibility studies. We haven't done any of these things, but this is what this thing looks like. Here are some approaches to existing tools. Here are some flaws that we've seen in those tools. Here's some ideas that we are developing to avoid hitting the same pitfalls that other people have 
found or maybe just stuff that maybe worked out for them, but we don't really want for ourselves because we are a different group. Um, and the goal of this LDVP tool is to say there is no perfect way because we don't have enough money to just launch everything at once. Um, I don't know that there is enough money to launch everything at once. So here are the pros and cons. Here is a list of scenarios for everyone to take a look. So as a community and as a board, we can say, these are the trade-offs that we're going to make here. This is, this is what we're going to do. Here's that. And tasks one through four are not actual policy suggestions. They're saying this is the information that we're going to use to inform the decisions that we're going to make. So we're creating data sets. We're doing that kind of stuff. And that's my understanding from having read them. Uh, but I was not actually in that meeting. So my, my goal at this moment is to have um, Nick Chassett uh, say, these things are posted. Here is the comment and input process. Um, and have the two board members and our community member who actually went to a bit of a review of those things give some comments on this. Um, I want to keep this part of the discussion and actually potentially rolling in, um, maybe even keep the, the part about the present the meeting to the next agenda item because it covers more than SMART. Uh, but to really let people know like this is an informational item, they're posted, this is how public comment works, and then we'll go into more than SMART and be able to really like get a little bit deeper into that. Does that make sense? Okay, so Nick. So, um, <coughs> Escaping, but not this past Friday, but the Friday, no, the Monday, Friday, the last Monday, a week ago, um, we posted the we did five draft documents from the Local Development Business Plan to uh, our website. We e blasted it out to our large um, 1,500 person uh, mailing list, and um, we requested that. Uh, folks uh, provide public comment on those documents. So we opened a 30-day public comment window. Um, during that time, folks are encouraged to, to read through, provide up to five pages of comment per document, just so that we have some um, some structure to, uh, to to it. No, it doesn't get to be totally draft, redrafting your own sections. Uh, and then those comments will, will be collected by the local well and business plan team and reviewed by the local business plan team uh, and uh, East Bay uh, Community Energy staff. And um, we agree that there are recommendations from those comments that um, are worthy of um, making changes to the document. Those will then be made in a manner that is very clear. Right, we got these five comments and these three comments, we are not going to make any changes. Here's why. These are two sets of comments. You know what, there's a great point about how you look at the potential for solar. You need to account for age of roof. So, you know what, you should think for any building that has a roof that's more than 15 years. An example, I'm not saying that's even an issue that came up. That, then we say, okay, that's a great comment. That will then be noted and a modification might be made, but it will be made in a manner that is very clear. This was the comment, this is the change that's being made so that it's clear where the where the suggested change is coming from. And so Chris is here, which is awesome. Um, and I also want to stress that from my understanding, so clarify me if I'm wrong here, that this, like, when we set out this process, this is the stage where the first draft comes out. So this is not like, this is a recommendation. Or, but like, this is the place where, like, this is the first public input part, right? So um, things are being developed. Do you want to just talk for a second on um, that? Sure. What, what I would say is that the way the structure of the LDBP project was put forth in the RFP and in our proposal response to that was sort of the first four tasks sort of provide the underlying assessments that form the basis of our recommendations and the plan that come in the latter parts of the, of the project. So tasks five through seven which will be taking place primarily in 2018 under the revised schedule. So the documents that are available now, as the chair said, are in draft form. They're open for public comment. Uh, there's a lot of flexibility sort of built into them. And so we're looking forward to hearing your comments. 
and making some changes as Nick described. And, um, and I would just add there are other tasks one through four work products that are pending this year. And so there'll be another batch coming very soon. And we'll circulate those, I believe, under the same process. Um, one thing that I believe we're also talking about doing is a webinar for each of the um, work products as well. And so we're trying to be, I think, very inclusive and open and get as much comment and feedback, which was very much a pillar of our project the way we proposed it. And so, you know, I would encourage all of you to read the documents, to give us some comments. And um, we'll be making a presentation to the board on Wednesday, which has a little bit more detail. Essentially, this says the same thing that we're talking about now. I'm happy to answer questions about any or all of that. And um, thanks for having me. So the first round of webinars will be before these comments are due November 30th, right? December 3rd. December 3rd. OK, cool. Um, will there be like separate webinars on the different? Yes, I, th I believe that's the plan. We're still working on some of the logistics and sort of getting that process in place. But I think we're trying to, um, you know, do that before the end of the comment period. And the webinar, the idea is the value of a webinar structure is it's great to be there and ask questions, but if you can't, you can still post it. So that's something that you can always go and review, you know, listen to, watch the webinar and say, okay, here's the presentation, here's the questions that folks ask, and I should provide some comments. Okay, so it would come up, sorry, it would come up after we No, so there would be, oh, the the no, no, so I'm saying the webinars will be put, part of the logic of a webinar versus yeah. just having them at a CAC meeting is that anyone can go at any time and watch a webinar mm -hmm. on the EBC website and then that, say, then you can go and watch, you know, you have a half an hour and say, I want to watch a half an hour on a solar site assessment and you get sort of the full presentation with the slides and then if there's any Q&A, you'll benefit from that and come from the comfort of your home if you so choose. <coughs> In hindsight, we almost should have done that last week. It might have made sense because we went through all those presentations yeah. in different areas. So may, yeah, maybe we could do that next time. Yeah. Do that. So yeah, that way we can get it out there quicker. <coughs> can I just clarify, did you say the comment period is going to end December 3rd? Or the webinar is? The Center. comment period. Comment is period ends. They're, they're still working on the So clarifications on that. So like, I want to watch the webinars before I make comments because there it would help clarify my understanding of the thing. But as we are running up now on the 13th and Thanksgiving and whatnot, like, do you know about when those are going to be available? I don't. We're working on it. We're working okay. on the logistics. <laughs> Fair enough. As soon as possible. Uh, Monica, so just to understand the process, because I remember the last time, so the comments are due the third. You'll take those comments and make revisions, and then does your product come to this group before it goes to the board, or does it go straight to the board? Yes, it would. The event, the next draft will absolutely come to the the CAC for. And that's about when. Um. Well, is there only one meeting in December? So yes, like December 6th. Yeah. So I think that means probably early part of January the next week, the following week. The, three Wait, the next round of drafts of the other tasks or the revisions to these drafts? I don't think we have a specific task schedule for when the revisions are going to be. No, I think oh. the idea is to have those comments in by the third for us to be able to process them and respond to them in some way, whether they are revisions or responses to comments is, is TBD. But I think three days later is not probably likely. So I, I, I think <laughs> the, 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 yeah. the thought is, you know, you get comments and then you review them, you respond to them, and then there will be a draft of these documents, and you, it may be that we want to do, you know, it all at once. That there's then a second draft. That this is more. All right, these were draft documents. We've taken public comment, and now at some point in the first quarter of the next year, those documents will be will be issued. I, I don't think there's been a specific discussion about the calendar. Right? There hasn't, but the idea, I think that's that's our understanding as well. We would you know, sort of take in comments on all of the drafts, and I think for efficiency purposes it may make sense to sort of make 
one final round of revisions and responses to those comments when they've all been received. And that's, again, sort of in discussion with Nick and trying to work you know, with the very busy schedule of launching the program. And so we're, we're working out those details now. This is a huge thing that this body had quite a lot to do with. So I do want to recognize the absolute response to the request for inclusion and transparency. Um, <coughs> like, I really want to recognize that. Um, and as we move into the next agenda item, which is more than smart, I do also want to recognize that um, opening that meeting up to the CAC members and to the community and that that is um, really helpful. It's really, really helpful. But you had another question. Oh, yeah. I, have a, I mean, I have a few more questions on the closed. Well, so, so one is what we as a committee want to do because December 3rd is a Sunday before our next meeting. Um, so, you know, I don't have a proposal now, but if anyone already has in mind how we're going to provide, if we, if we as a committee had thought that we were going to provide some comment as a committee, then I don't know how we're going to do that. Um, but maybe we just do it all individually or we do it virtually. Yeah, that's really good. Uh, public comment ends December 3rd, which is a Sunday. So the Sunday before our next meeting. Okay. okay. Um, so, but we, we could still take a look at those comments because they will be publicly posted and um, we can discuss them at our December 6th meeting. Um, and December 4th. December 4th. I, I, I believe the CAC could at any time decide, okay, these documents are there. The CAC decides this is just a, you know, at some point you just have to sort of you know, bookend these things to say, okay, you know, we're going to accept comments to a certain point. But for the CAC, I believe, you know, you're sort of. So, so you can submit comments when you want. So we, sort of. we have our meeting on December 4th and we can form kind of comments on these things or recommendations. Mm -hmm. Then you guys are still open to accepting those as part of the process. I don't think I mean, Yes. 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 <laughs> Great. Of course. But he just got a couple more. Okay. Oh, so, and, I mean, you can go ahead. So. This is just related. I just wonder if you were going to do that, would that need to be agendized as a an item on which there was going to be a decision so that the public would know ahead of time so that we could come and make comments? It's, is that a request to agendize? That seems like a very logical thing to do. It's the meeting. We're not going to have to take action. We're not going to take action. But it seems like the comments are related to a draft document. At some point, we'll make we'll take a position on a draft document and decide whether we support that. And knowing what the public's comment, having that information in our in our collectively in our minds, will lead us to either support or not support a draft document. But I don't think it's this group's responsibility or role to respond to individual comments. No, no, I don't think that's the recommendation. Okay, so so I don't know what the action's going to be on December fourth, or, or if we're going to have something. But it sounds like we won't have a draft draft for us to review and and make a, a an actual action on until like January or February, perhaps. This is the current round of documents that we're talking about. Maybe I can provide some clarification. Of it. So there are there are five documents that are posted online. So I've, I've already read some of them. I think some, some of the community has read some of them. We could talk about some of them now if that seems appropriate. Um, and yeah, and if not, you know, that, that's what I'm trying to figure out, like where, when we're going to have time to talk about these. But there, it's just this, it's a sporadic arrangement of um, documents that have been posted there. It's not, it's, um, Two document, three documents for task one, no document for task two, two documents for task three, and a document for task four. So these are already posted. The request is for comment by December 3rd. And so that, that's one thing. And then the rest of the documents, it sounds like, 
targeting the United States. So there is already no, 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 no. The, 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 the documents, I think, the rest of the documents are going to be coming out in the next couple of weeks. Well, January would be when you take the, comp, the documents that have been commented upon, and you might, that would be when you would say, all right, we're now going to issue a set of revisions based on comment. Okay. That would be in January. Now, I think for December 4th, the question is, does the CAC want to develop comments on these draft documents or no, right? That would be the, that would be the decision point for the right. CAC. Right. And that's, yeah. and, and if the question was, would it be okay to have a discussion on December 4th as opposed to December 3rd? I see no problem with right. so uh, that day or frankly a couple more days for the CAC. Yes. Yeah. Independent of the public. Yes. Yes. But just to work backwards, so if the final product to, is going to be delivered in April 2018 to the board, that's going to be one big document, right? The process, and this is part of the presentation to the board on Wednesday, the process is for us to complete tasks one through four this year, and tasks five through seven would be completed next year, prior to April 13th. So there are many different work products. They're all sort of in their own arc in terms of completion. Um, tasks one through four should be completed this year. And so there will be a number, of, a, a new batch of documents will be released in December. And then there will be tasks five through seven, which will be completed next year. And that's actually the plan, as well as the modeling that supports the plan and recommendations, scenarios, um, the integrated resource planning recommendations, and so forth. So the recommendations come in the later tasks. The ones that yes. go to the board in April. Tests so 1 through 4 are underlying assessments and technical work. Tests 5 through 7 form the basis of the plan. Okay, so then it's not until we get closer to April that we'll actually have motions or actions related to recommendations. It will, and and the, my understanding from our conversation at the last meeting is that uh, they're, they're really working on avoiding here's everything all at once, you have three days because that's not going to work. Um, so as each step is rolled out, like from draft, even before it gets to the, this is the recommendation you go for it, they're, they're, they're publishing, they're gathering input, they're having comments, so that there is, that there's, we're building for like, okay, this section, that kind of thing. So. But just to clarify, some of these, some of these drafts do have recommendations. I mean, I, tasks one and two were the most purely just data connected data collection informational items. And I don't know why we've moved away from what the JPA originally required, but it had a very simple set of deliverables and time frames. There was, there was supposed to be at three and a half months, there was supposed to be a draft of task one and a draft of task two. And that made sense because they were the, they were the technical feasibility, uh, technical potential and feasibility pieces. Task three and four are get to recommendations around implementation programs. And so there are recommendations, and I've read these, and if you read them, they are, they're recommendations. They're juicy, great things to talk about. So, um, and so, so we're gonna have a lot of feedback. Some of the points that Nick mentioned earlier about just transition, um, like ways to think about robust workforce recommendations, that's that's in these drafts. Um, that's a piece of it. So, so there's some robust stuff here. I, the, this, this all kind of, I don't know, it just, it's kind of gotten confusing the way that now, that because there are this set of not finished work products that are out there, it was, um, the JPA laid it out in a pretty, the, this, not the JPA, I'm sorry, the RFP for the, for the local, de local development business plans set it out in a pretty straightforward way. And originally, other than task one and task two, then there was supposed to be a draft of all of the um, all of the rest of the tasks, um, so I don't know. I mean, that's just to say it's it's tricky for us to figure out how it's help it makes sense for the CAC to be involved in in commenting on all of these. But uh, what I would say is, so each of the work products, and they're they're we're following along the RFP process and the work products that were outlined there. Each of them, as they're completed, would be published for a thirty day comment and review period, uh, and the webinar would be produced to support that. Those 
those are sort of draft recommendations, underlying assessments. They're not the final recommendations. That would come in the plan and the scenario work. And then so to give you an example. Like guidelines then or principles? Well, so feed and tariff, for example. The feed and tariff draft design has been put forward, but it has many flexible pieces. So in in one scenario we might do a very less aggressive version of the feed and tariff. In another scenario in in the planning document, we might do a more aggressive version of the feed and tariff. So it's not the final recommendations. That comes out of the modeling, you know, economic, fiscal impact modeling to understand what you know we would recommend in terms of a final recommendation in the plan. Yeah. So all of that work would come to you next year. Okay. For now, over the next month or so, there will be a series of additional draft documents that you can comment on, give us feedback on, we can make changes. That's the process as I understand it. So I want to just give a, a sort of like a, a way of thinking about this because I think people might. Um, so in order to come up with a local development business plan, you need a lot of pieces, right? You have to consider a lot of things. You have to do a lot of analysis. And that's the work that's going on. These are all work products that are part of building in, you know, to the final kind of product and final set of recommendations. And in a way, this is the work that the team is doing in order to educate itself, in order to be able to make the final recommendation. This is all that work. And what's valuable to the community is to see those pieces, to understand what those pieces are, and to, be, and to, and to educate us about what's involved in trying to figure out this kind of roadmap that we're talking about. So this is not a matter of taking these different work products and saying, oh, we're going to approve them, or we're going to disapprove them, or we're going to whatever. It's about really understanding what, what is involved in trying to, to come up with something that's going to work uh, for, for the community and for the system overall. So I think if you look at it from that perspective, think about this as educational work. This is like where you're concerned. You look and see if the things that are of interest to the community are being dealt with, if they're being treated in a certain way, and whatnot. This is not a highly technical kind of review of, of, of this kind of stuff. This is about building the building blocks so that when, when the final plan comes out, we can understand what this is all about and what's going into it. And I think if you sort of have that sort of framework, it helps in this discussion a lot. So, you know, if the Community Advisory Committee wants to make a recommendation about a particular work product, Fine, but the whole idea is more to understand what that work product is about, why it's part of the mix, and what maybe, you know, maybe some of the implications might be that you provide some feedback. I don't know if that's helpful. So I, I kind of want to take a look at this thing here because there's, there's two components here that are really important that I'm hearing. Um, when we do, the next agenda item is more than smart. And um, we are going to get a presentation. I'm really like looking at timing, like, hmm. Um, and uh, and this is going to be an important thing for us to be able to talk about and like actually have time for discussion on, as this was a big deal for everybody. Uh, the the question that I have for you guys is, if you want time at the next meeting to actually go through these things and talk about these big juicy bits. I won't be there, my personal, not as chair, but my personal recommendation would be to talk about them as a group um, because there are these big things um, to see if there are comments that we want to add. Because um, this would be, I mean, do it as an individuals, but like coming together and doing that group kind of education with everybody would be really beneficial for me and I look forward to hearing the audio. Um, but uh, but you can also decide that that is not something that you want to do until the revisions have come back. So I'm just wondering if there are feelings on that. But I'm looking at the time here, and I don't feel that this is the time to discuss each of those things, especially as the webinars haven't come out yet. There will be a lot of questions that I ideally will be addressed in those. Um, is Would you like time on the next agenda to really get into this? Yes, I would. Great. All right, so that we're going to ideally make that a big chunk of the whole meeting so that people have the time to talk those things up, um, uh, or, or at least fit it in with the other stuff. And just the last 
a question. You're, you're going to post the comments as you receive them, or are you going to wait the public comments until after? I think we'll probably do it in one go, just from a, just from a, just from a ease of posting standpoint on the website. I, we, we could post them. I, I was going to post them all at once once we've gotten them all. Just so that, you know, they're all there, you know when they're there, it's all. And I recommend everybody to comment. I, you know, I think it's really important. The more people mm -hmm. comment, uh, the better. Absolutely. I mean, not to give you over work, but it's really good to get all the different perspectives. Yeah, no, I know. So we're going to put that, that's the request to have that agenda I was just made. Um, the more than smart uh, is here. Um, I'm not actually more than smart, but I'm more than what's, what's your name? Tony. Tony Pernella. Uh, nice to meet you as well. Uh, so the idea was to get a, a bit of a presentation um, and also from the folks who participated in the first review process um, about how long did you have presentation-like thing planned for? Uh, I'm kind of like you. I was just going to give a quick uh, intro to Martin Smart, and I'm actually open to your committee members who were there who might be able to dive in a little bit more. There were so many people that actually sat on the outside of the room, so I think they might have had a better perspective sitting in the room. So, so um, the things that I know would be helpful for me to have covered as I didn't participate is who you guys are, what you've been hired for, what your process is, and then how that first meeting went, and I know there are about a million questions sitting in this room, uh, which is why we were very excited that you are willing to be here. So, welcome. Great. Yeah. Do you have a hand up? I, I didn't bring them, but I can provide one. So, thanks everyone for inviting me. I was going to be brief. Uh, I'm the CEO of More Than Smart. Um, More Than Smart is a horribly named nonprofit. We were we started on smart grid issues. Uh, the governor's office actually named our, our uh, organization that we are looking to rename next year. So we're looking for suggestions. You know, yeah. as I, I look at on your agenda, that's why I can't think of something worse. How that Thanks. looks, but um, <laughs> yes, it will be changing. It's very obnoxious. I, uh, but that's it, exactly. It right. was meant to be smart grid. So just that was when we stepped out of our community. It, it looks horrible. So we know and we are changing that. But uh, we're a five hundred one c three nonprofit based in Oakland, California. So uh, I live in Oakland, and we have four <laughs> that are here. All of us have pretty deep policy and technical experience, and our whole focus is trying to help the state and different entities on thinking about broader topics of what happens when you put more renewable energy onto the electricity grid. So for about the last five years, that's been our main focus. So we try and do sort of a unique model that your advisory uh, members were at, is we try and put together groups of people, typically no more than 15 or 20 people, to really look through and tackle issues that people can't do on their own. So typically our working groups include utilities, nonprofits, DER providers, um, interested stakeholders, you know, office of ratepayer advocates, turn, labor, whoever is interested to come and participate. Because um, I, I can guarantee you I would love, uh, I invite you to come to any of the meetings that we have. We had a full day meeting today. Um, that if, uh, if you don't slightly go to sleep in part of our meetings, then something's wrong. They're very technical. Uh, it's very wonky engineering type of work that is very important to educate people like you and I. I'm not a technical person per se, but a lot of what we try and do is to understand where the state is headed right now in their their um, DER promotion efforts. You know, we're looking at decarbonization, grid mod. There are some massive issues that are currently taking over the state. Um, you guys are a part of that, and you know I sit here. I'm amazed. I, I wish some of you would sit on my board. I need more participation of my own organization. But um, to understand the changes that CCAs are seeing across the state, 
And you know, Al, I think, was very clear in our meeting. You guys are unique. You come up with a very unique plan. I think your local development business plan is, is something that I thought was represented very well by the consultants. And we were lucky to have you guys there and present. So I thought it was a great opportunity. Um, the type of people that we brought, and I have a list, and, and we welcome anyone to participate. I think we're only going to try and do one of these meetings. We were just hired to do two meetings and bring together a group that can look at the, the local development business plans, pull together a group of people who are really what we see as sort of our gurus. These are people that are really unique of being able to look at what you guys have put out and really to figure out ways to hopefully strengthen how you guys are looking to develop in the future. And so I think there's many issues that I know that we wrestle with every day on a more statewide basis, for example, how do you get renewables to be at the right place at the right time? Uh, those are really complicated issues that would just enhance what you're already trying to do. Other issues are really trying to figure out with the local utility, you do have to pay attention to where their substations are, or how electricity or rates are changed based on different parts of the service carry for PG&E. So um, what we're hoping to do is a very small sliver, and all I see of our role is to really build on exactly, I will say great, was these are all plans that come forward and help educate people to understand what are the best solutions for you that you guys have already sort of developed. So our role is that we'll do one more meeting. I think we're going to do December 5th or 6th. I can't remember, but my other colleague, Matthew Tisdale, is the one who led the meeting, and so he wasn't able to come tonight. Um, but we're open to talk to anybody on any part of our little role. Uh, after that next meeting on December 5th or 6th, we'll then provide some suggestions also to the, um, the business plan, uh, as well as do our own report that would be in January. And that's something that will be in addition to what others are putting out as additional suggestions of just talking about how to enhance what you guys are already doing. So that's all I had to really say. I'm more than happy to speak and would welcome anybody who showed up of, you know, speaking about whatever I missed or, you know, what's missing from what we've done. I'd actually like um, Subin, Nick, and Al to comment on that process and, yeah. and your takeaways, and then there's a, a bunch of questions. So, yeah. You mind if I? Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah, I mean, um, I just, uh, it, was, it was very informational, so I think for the most part it was a group of people who are coming together to hear about the local development business plan for the first time. Um, a uh, uh, pretty broad range of folks from different nonprofits and industry folks, and um, so a range of a range of individuals. Um, so it started off with like an introduction to the LDBP, and then the big chunk of the meeting was going through three presentations that focused on three of the draft documents of, of the five or six that are out there, and going into more depth on them. Um, and those were. Uh, and those are, I think everyone, even in that meeting, agreed on the, the juicier ones. And so it's like, even if it's not final and if there's not recommendations, they, they provide a lot of space for conversation just to get, um, and they were, uh, the, the, the presentation on the draft about the feed-in tariff, a presentation on the draft about what I think will probably be renamed because it's not really agency as a developer, but the agency as a collective procurement monster, and, um, and a good monster. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. He's trying to throw out a no cookie monster. monster. Yeah. <laughs> so totally, yeah. And then the third one was the workforce draft. So um, there was a lot of. It was mostly just questions. So there was a lot of just questions from the, the folks there. Um, There's some positive, some skepticism, but I'm just trying to get an, a sense of, of where things were going. Really, kind of. We just were racing through so much material to go through. Yeah, and I, I saw, yeah, it was a workshop, more of an informational workshop, and, and that's why I think it'd be really important to, you know, televise that next time, and so that way it's really open, because I, I learned a lot, you know, especially, you know, workforce development, and, and again, we got to get back to the JPA of how we bring that in, that's the founding document, that's our constitution, and so how do we get that to make sure that we answer that with this plan? Um, and you know, I, I thought it was uh, it, it was well run. You know, and, and you know, look forward to the next one that you have. Uh, I, I I'd like a little bit more just on you know not so much um, uh, the presentation, but more exchange and dialogue. I didn't really see as much as that of like 
here's a short presentation. Now let's just go around the room and, and talk about because you had you had some super smart people that had some really good comments, you know, like Al and, and so I, I that's the only thing I would suggest. I wanna do that. Yeah. Uh, well, it was a pretty interesting. Uh, it was a pretty interesting meeting. Uh, I think the main uh, challenge is for people who uh, think a lot about the grid to start thinking about community, because this is clearly like where the division is: is that you get a bunch of uh, statewide experts together who can talk uh, up and down and around and about all about the grid, as if the grid, you know, is something that has to be you know, satisfied, met, whatever you want to call it, shape, and so on and so forth. And, and it's true that there is some, there's some technological aspects about that, but what people are totally uh, unfamiliar with is the notion of thinking about an electricity system in terms of meeting the needs of the community, right? So I think that a lot of the dynamics in the room there uh, was that people were really realizing for the first time that electricity is not uh, just about the grid and about the stability of the system and about uh, how uh, how these costs are bigger or less than those costs and so on and so forth, but to start thinking about what the benefits of an electricity system is to a population, to a county, to you know a community of people, because after all, electricity is a resource, energy is a resource that we all need to live and to work and to do all those things. And, if you start from that position, uh, then you get to very different kinds of results. And if you start from a position of how do we how, how do we match a community choice to the grid, like that's absolutely the backward and upside down position. So it's true that if we're really successful in the East Bay of creating a community choice program that can really meet the needs of our citizens and uh, deploy and, and distribute energy resources in an optimal way and in a way that uh, provides jobs and, and resilience in the face of climate change and all that, then what we have here is a lesson that's really important for the rest of the state to learn, for the CPUC to learn, for other community choice programs to learn. So this exercise was, you know, it was a, a good beginning exercise about talking to people who are experts at the state level. I mean, you're talking about people who are, you know, working at the, at the CPUC, and who've been even, uh, you know, uh, Mike Florio was there, previous commissioner or whatnot. I think this is a new way of looking, you know, at electricity and energy to a lot of people, and, and it's really important. So that to me is what, what struck me, is that I think people there found it actually pretty interesting to be thinking about, we're talking about electricity, and we're having a presentation about workforce development, and, you know, how demand draws supply and what that means. You know, we're talking about uh, uh, collaborative uh, procurement. Basically, the notion of agency as developer means that you know the agency basically goes and it really makes it possible for individual homeowners, business owners, or whatever, to be able to do things that they couldn't have done uh, on their own because of the power of the agency to aggregate and make that work and eliminate risk. And these are really interesting uh, things to think about if we want to really bring renewable energy to scale and to be able to address climate change. So, I mean, I thought it was a very good education. I mean, I'm sorry for being so long-winded, but just to give you a flavor of, of what the challenge is here and the fact that, that there's a lot of education to be done uh, in order to get to a new kind of consciousness of what we're trying to do or what Community Choice is trying to do. Um, there are... Just if you have a question here, go like this. Really? That's uh, hilarious to me. All right, Victor, go for it. Um, and then I got a list of them. So. Thank you. Um, uh, thank you for the introduction to more than smart, and that was really a terrible name. <laughs> um, I think from the IBW side, um, we have been able to uh, build uh, utility scale uh, wind farms like in Altamont or down in San Bernardino, huge uh, gigawatts of uh, renewable solar fields, utility scale, pricing comes down by 40 cents. Uh, everything that has scale to uh, 
help in the, in the state's decarbonization uh, policy. Um, and what we heard at some of the um, uh, different utility commission uh, hearings, the on banks, the, uh, the different conversations by all the different uh, uh, agencies, uh, providers, uh, uh, ESPs, and CCAs, and, and uh, what was interesting was the, uh, uh, while, we are built, while we were able to build the scale up, the inability now for utilities and others to procure long-term contracts because of risk involved, because of insta uh, instability in the market, is a concern because now uh, the, uh, there are literally uh, gigawatts of projects that are stalled now uh, because of uncertainty in the market. And maybe these are things that you discuss or that you look at. Um, and in terms of workforce development, you know, how do we train up uh, for renewable energy jobs if there are no jobs, kind of projects that are going to be built uh, because of some of the uh, uncertainty of the, the market long-term contracts. And in fact, some of the CCAs like Lancaster, uh, Turn pointed out that they looked at data and 65% of the renewables are coming from out of state. You know, so that does not, that does not help local uh, workforce development. And so I think that this CCA is trying to look at a, a, a model, a way to do that development uh, within Alameda County for those jobs for the training. And so your, the work that you're doing with the smart grid and how that interacts with um, the business plan, the local jobs, the grid is an integral part of this whole process. And so uh, our utility workers, our construction workers that, that do this kind of work, we want to continue to do this, especially for where we live and work, which is Alameda County. So I'm hoping that you're looking at workforce in terms of this, these conversations that are going on and that sense of community is uh, we're a part of the community too. Yeah, so I, I, I can you just go through it or what do you want? Uh, okay. um, you go for it. There. Um, yeah, no, I mean, we have this small sliver. You guys have been doing this for a couple of years. I won't even pretend that things are going to be solved in our working group. I think our main aspect is to try and bring in people that are interested in the success of the, the um, of East Bay community energy and figure out ways to enhance what's already being done. So I think we're not going to come up with a lot of new things in our process. Historically, um, you know, we we realize uh, well one thing just that I kind of a different I think as Al was talking about, I think it's really important what I've seen. I've done a lot on forestry and land use in the past and suddenly I've dropped in with a room full of engineers. Uh, talking about the electricity grid. And it's really complicated for the majority of people to understand what's being talked about. So I hope in our process, our last meeting was not that, but I think as I'm also a community member here who's going to uh, be getting power, is to demand more answers on what people are, people are talking about to connect what you guys have here, which I think is a unique aspect that can help some of the other CCAs living across the state with this very complicated, you know, and, and Nick knows, and a lot of you guys know, it's just it's really difficult to understand. You know, today I had a full day meeting on integrated capacity analysis. What's the capacity of the electricity grid? The other was the locational net benefit analysis for DERs. And anyway, I'm not gonna lecture, but these are topics that 30 people from all over the state volunteer their time with the IUs to show up to these meetings because they're extremely important to the future of where DER goes in our grid. And I think for what we hope to provide at the end of our involvement is to simply give you an additional lens of what we see is happening with some of these experts. And I can list off some of the people and organizations, but I hope we'll answer some of these. And then for this, the long-term contracts, you know, versus maybe some of these local providers, that's going to, you know, we, we're not going to get into as much of that, but I think it's helpful to answer that. But come to the meeting. I've got some kind of specific yeah. uh, things there uh, based off of, of things you just said. So um, you are having two meetings, and the first one that just happened was the first introduction to electrical grades as, like, as community benefit? Um, I don't know. No? Okay. You're shaking your head, so that's good. Um, 
but there, there are going to be two meetings, and then there's going to be public comment that will be posted with everybody else's, and then there will be a report out in January. Right. right. Yeah. Cool. And the intent was to simply provide some additional insight on what the business plan was done. So I think as we had just been talking about it, that also has been adjusted in terms of, I think, when the final product was done. So we just, we just want to adjust the couple okay. on that. Um, and, and what are your actual stated goals? Like, what is the goal? The goal, as we talked about, is to try and provide an additional layer of assistance on um, how the issues that you should be considering as you put more renewables onto the electricity grid. Okay. Um, and you, yeah, and the focus is is statewide. Is that correct? Mm. Was that? Yeah, yeah that was that was just going to be. Yeah, I, I, I can answer. <clears throat> no, it was it's local, but obviously what we do locally is going to impact the state and vice versa. And so one thing what what they were looking at too is well where does that intersect? You know, where's the impact that we're going to have on the grid and in the state? and vice versa. So like Lancaster, what they do in Lancaster actually will affect us here in the East Bay. And so, you know, where is that balancing in that intersection? Let me give a very concrete example of the local statewide nexus. So um, you have a fee if you're doing rooftop solar through a feed-in tariff. Right now, those projects have to pay the transmission access charge. That can be, you know, very expensive. It can be up to fifteen, twenty dollars a megawatt hour, one and a half or two cents a kilowatt hour. Right. So that changes the price drastically. That's and that that drastically make, that makes doing local projects in Alameda County much more expensive. If the Cal uh, California Independent System Operator were to change the way they go about accounting for the transmission access charge and say, if a solar facility in Alameda County never like, exports to the transmission system, if the electricity only stays in the distribution system, you don't have to pay the transmission access charge. Suddenly, one and a half or two cents a kilowatt hour of cost is taken off. So you know that changes the potential, the economic potential, to be able to do more rooftop solar in Alameda County. Because you know, if we think we can only afford so much to be competitive with PG&E, we can reduce the cost mm -hmm. of local, then we can do more local. So that's a concrete example of that sort of statewide nexus versus. We should also uh, this has been sent around with a pretty detailed list of what we're doing, the questions that are going to be answered to the people on that list. So I'm holding this, but I think it'd be really helpful, but not to read through it, but to send and I think. You know, put it on our website, whatever, whatever you need. But it's a two-page thing that's right here. That put it, we'll put it on. We have a local development business plan page on BBC, and that way we'll just put it on there. Yeah. Exactly. I have a suggestion or a question. Um, you know, I haven't been very much involved with it when was in the first workshop, but um, I think for me, what would be useful to see, or or I know that we haven't spent a whole lot of time, is customers willing to pay for all this stuff because there's definitely a point where if you build a system or you develop a program that is too expensive and our customers do have choice, they can go right back to pg &E. Or if, we, if direct access happens, they can go somewhere else. Or they can bypass us entirely and put rooftop PV on their own. So I'd like to see kind of a, what that willingness to pay and what our sensitivity is to all of these added and added and added costs, whether they be for uh, workforce development or creating more renewables locally versus remotely versus whatever else we might want to do. Because um, there is a tipping point. There's a point where we will price ourselves out of business, I believe. Okay. Um, What's that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's just agreement. Um, stacking really quick and then watching time. So Barbara, Cynthia, did I see somebody right here? So I'd like to see um, integrated into cost analysis the non-energy benefits of uh, distributed energy resources. So for instance, the good jobs that are created, the safety net uh, savings that you get when people have jobs or not on unemployment, don't need extra, you know, Medi-Cal and 
things like that, because those almost never get counted into the cost of <coughs> basically having local projects that create jobs that benefit the local economy versus remote uh, large projects which can benefit, make really good jobs for people, so I'm not saying there isn't any benefit, but it's, it's really those local distributed energy, non-energy benefits are big and never, not really well even referenced or researched, I don't think. Um, I'd like to have that two-page uh, document uh, since I'm learning, still learning, since I'm a social worker. Uh, um, I apologize for not printing some of these. No, 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 no. But could you um, give it to the assistant and yep. maybe you can have that distributed? Yeah, absolutely. Along with the uh, date of the next meeting, which I think yep. you said, I think I'm off working on Saturday. I think it's the, okay. yeah. so but I, I can also, if there's one email. Assessment. If there's one email that you send me, this can you I can just as soon as I get home send you what Actually, I get. Actually, we just send you an email right now. Yeah. Great. Um, so, just so to avoid brown act violations, she does all this. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Um, oh, I just wanted to you know mention one thing. I think it's um, that like the, there's just a I, I see this process as just a larger analysis and more people being involved in just scrutinizing our good ideas. I also want to mention that I think that what I what I would love to see people, because I think people kind of have two lenses um, uh, you know, when they're like an analyzing this sort of thing, trying to find the weaknesses, which I think we need, and then also trying to find um, solutions to achieve. And they're two different brains, two different ways of approaching it, and both are helpful. I think the local development business team consultant teams are, they, they're squeezed in the hardest place of, we just dreamscaped what we want to see in this county, which is amazing, because it's more about a community energy program rather than anything about the grid or electricity. That's why everyone's interested in it. And the, the, the challenge of actually trying to figure out how to build it is really, is difficult. So I think those, the, uh, for folks who have particular expertises here and there, it's both valuable, not just to see like the skepticism, but like, well, if you're going to counter that this isn't the best way to achieve this, well, how else do you think this, this community has this ambitious goal, how else would you try to achieve this, you know, something that would be offered? Absolutely, no, that's, I think, fundamental. And I think, um, I think to the other point, I think promoting more conversation, I think, Great as we go. Exactly. And I, I think that that's like one of the underlying goals of everybody who is invited is constructive. It's not, oh, this is impossible right. to do. It's how do we do, like, what is the goal, the underlying goal around job creation or air, you know, improving air quality? How do we get to that goal yeah. most efficiently? Here's some ideas. Well, here's some, maybe I, we have some other ideas that are really good and interesting as well. Let's, Let's have that discuss. Let's have that dialogue, and in, in, in a very defined, not like let's open ended forever and always talk about it. But it's just, you know, throw some new ideas out. There. I'm excited to see the, um, the the concept of having those things broadcast so people can watch them because I so very much wanted to see that. And having mm -hmm. uh, input process there is is great. And so thank you for that. I have a lot of. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing the questions. I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys bring forward, um, and and having that process be really transparent and what those recommendations are be really transparent will be a good thing uh, for moving forward in a time of fashion. Uh, Absolutely, no, and and I didn't quite, you know, I'll put my own point. Uh, it was the first time that maybe some of those plans were presented, so I really appreciated the presentations. We usually. Uh, I encourage you to go on some of our websites, and I'll send a couple other resources. Uh, we kill people with webinars. That's, I shouldn't say it that way. We, we make it very painful for people where we all have our webinars and notes, and we're, we're more than transparent. We do a lot of our work with the California Public Utilities Commission, and so that work requires us to be overly uh, transparent in what we do. So uh, for the next one, I think definitely we'll do a webinar. Um, and make sure that that's available to whoever wants to see it. And many of those people in this room are super wonky, so it might be more interesting than you think. Um, oh, yeah. I'm, I'm calling time on this.
item, though, unless there's something really pressing this morning. Well, I just had one. So we talked about like the implications of kind of the framing broader on the state, but there's some nexus there. In the email we got, I appreciated the framing when we were invited to participate in this, but like one of the, just wanted to dig in a little more because it talks about the one of the deliverables being a discussion piece with conclusions and recommendations to CCA utilities, stakeholders, and policymakers. So just, it feels broader and it like brought up questions of why EBCE specifically is funding this if this is like much larger, but I don't know if there's any additional. I think part of it, so part of it is, you know, this isn't, I think, for use of this, but like part of this effort is not, we're not funding every capacity. And I think their interest in participating is, all right, we'll bring together and sort of work on this EBC project, but what we're really interested in is the statewide implications of a local development business plan and the answer mm -hmm. of this effort. So um, I think in our interests, we are doing things differently here, and but it, frankly, it matters, really matters if only if other folks start adopting what we're like. The impact that we have is significant in Alameda County, but the impact is really only transformational if CCAs across California, and frankly beyond California, start to look at some of the things that we're doing and say, all right, that's working there. Mm -hmm. We're going to adopt that agency as, you know, not developer, whatever, monster, <laughs> like that's something that we should all be doing. Mm -hmm. Or those, some of those workforce development requirements, wow, when we're thinking about our net metering program, maybe we need to have some workforce development requirements because we want to tie, you know, putting solar on people's roofs to creation of better jobs. Those are the kinds of things that they have an impact here, but they, the real transformation is when we can actually communicate that and share that. And just okay. two, oh, mm -hmm. sorry. Time. All right, yeah, go for it. But I was, we're good. Sherry said I was just gonna say, uh, for us, you guys are in this exciting space. We get a lot of our funding from Energy Foundation or Hewlett Foundation, and so they've given us support with more leverage to work on things. So mm -hmm. we're excited that we at least would get this opportunity. Uh, four months is not what a typical project is for us, you know, so we're in Hawaii and Washington and Oregon and a number of other states. Um, so I just see this as a great opportunity that I hope is both ways, that you guys can benefit by some of the things that we would really like to try and engage with you guys on and vice versa. I think, you know, I hope that we can learn a lot just on both sides. Thank you. Thank you. We will have lots and lots of questions for you in the future. Um, it sent us emails. So like, I'm, I'm, I'm more transparent than anybody around. I, I didn't bring it, but I will put my email All right. in. All right, so um, I am noting time. So some of these things I am going to railroad through, and there will not be discussion really on. There will just be, here's a point of information for you. Um, if it is unclear, email me or Stephanie. It should be real easy. So policy and procedures, development stuff. We actually have speakers on, so I guess I won't railroad that quickly. Um, can I get the, the thing first and then you guys can do your comments? Yeah. Is that fair? Yeah. All right. Excuse so, Nick is going to be bringing Nick and Stephanie at all and staff. So, actually, have you been introduced yet? Uh, informally with folks and, and at the full so board meeting. But uh, my name is Howard Chang. For those I haven't met yet, um, I'm the new COO. Um, about two weeks in right now, so very oh. new. Mm -hmm. um, and I and myself and with all the process. We had somebody, week. one of our other uh, soon to start colleagues, was here. She had to go home. And Annie, she said on Wednesday. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, <laughs> 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 we're equity, right? Or we're actually beyond equity yeah. because we have Supriya who's starting next week. This is great. Uh, and, Mel so and, Melissa and Melissa starts so the week after that, so actually that's four to two. All right. So um, the so our our growing staff, which is fantastic, um, is going to be bringing. Um, they, they're, they're developing a series of policies and procedures, the RFP process that we asked for, some of the other things, and they're going to be asking folks for uh, different types of input. So either I know a place or I know a city or I know a company that does this really well, you should take a look at it, or when you're developing that thing, please take into consideration this thing, right? So. Um, 
some of you from your different backgrounds will have different input on some of these items. You might not have input on all of them, but as as those things happen, we'll at least get to say, please take this into consideration when you're making this policy, or hey guys, you might not have to reinvent this wheel, take a look at what's happening in Emeryville, for example. They have a great policy on whatever it is, right? So, um, so they'll let us know what those things are so that there is time for people to take a look about what they think is important to be taken into consideration in those policies. Some of them, like IFPs, maybe many people have <coughs> put on, but just so you know, there will be a process for that as it moves forward. Um, yeah? Yeah. Um, do we need a public comment on that? Wait, just a quick question. Sorry, yeah, that's the next not. meeting that we're um, we don't do so point. I don't know. So like to the plan is at the next meeting we are going to bring the list the, the first set of uh, policy and procedures. Not we're not actually gonna have like the recommendation for what they should be. It's going to be mostly really operational policies and procedures, RFPs focused on energy procurement, and sort of delegations around, um, I guess, energy procurement. And we're going to have a list of five, ten, whatever they may be. And we'll say, all right, these are the five and ten that we're focusing on first. These are really important operationally for EBC to put in place as quickly as we can reasonably do because they are part of our overall sort of good governance. We're going to say, here's the five or ten, and here's our, here are two or three comparables that we're going to be looking at. We're going to be looking at for energy procurement. Um, Alameda Municipal Utility has really good governance around how they do energy procurement. All right, so we're going to be looking at their policy around energy procurement. We're going to be looking at Livermore's policy around RFPs. So we'll have that, and then we're going to be asking for feedback, much like Olivia said, and Olivia said, what are some other places to look? What are some other key criteria? Here's a pop. Here's a. Here's a. Uh, uh, here's a policy that we really feel like is important to be embedded in RFP design around inclusion when you're looking for bidders, whatever it may be. And then you'll say, okay, I want that. And then we'll collect that list. We're going to take that back over December. And the idea is that we're going to come forward with maybe not the all ten, but maybe the two or three most important operational policies that we need to have for CAC review of the actual policies and then board approval. And then over the course of January and probably in February, we're going to be coming forward with more policies and procedures for review and approval. Um, are there clarifying questions on that? We are really I'm trying to be very cognizant of time, but don't want people to leave that one confused because us giving input is going to be important. Yes? Can I just request that we see those proposed policies before the meeting? Yes. Great. So that they get posted like a week ahead of time. Um, yeah. Awesome. So, uh, yeah, here's how I'm looking at the rest of this thing as it is now 9 o'clock. Um, so just really quick, we're hoping to get an update on the wholesale service provider RFP because the recommendation came from this committee to have that separated out. That was adopted. Um, and so uh, we've had people sit in on that. So I was wondering if you wanted to give us, an, and I mean like a, a quick update on Very, what that, so where we're at. Five entities submitted bids. We reviewed the bids. There was an interview panel for the bids. Um, and through the interview panel, there was a discussion, there was some additional discussion about some more detailed questions around specific experiences that are particularly relevant to, uh, to EBCE. Those questions were uh, submitted to the five bidders. They're, they submitted answers, four submitted answers today. One is going to be submitting their answers tomorrow. Those answers are going to be circulated among the panel. The panel is EBCE staff, uh, Megan. And uh, we brought on a consultant named Sam Golding, who's done a lot of uh, work with other CCAs around uh, energy risk management. To not so much review the bids, but just to give us some feedback on, and they answer, this is their enterprise risk management. Like, well, what do you mean by that? So you provide that feedback. I believe tomorrow afternoon, the group is getting back together to review the questions 
or the, the second round of answers, and then from that, see if there's a clear recommendation. If there's not a clear recommendation, we'll then sort of come up with a process for doing another round of review to make a, a final recommendation. The idea is to bring it forward on December 6th for um, approval of the board. Great. December 6th to the board, but when to this group? So it will be December 4th. So we would have a rec the idea is that we are going to have a recommendation. Ideally, we'll ha we may have something as early as the end of this week, in which case, you know, once we have something, you know, subject, you know, next week might be a bit of a challenge, but on this one we're going to try to put a recommendation out as early as possible. So it sort of just depends on how quickly we get it together. But I think the idea is that we want to have something ready December 6th because we want to then launch into December moving pretty quickly to get everything in place. And on that, uh, thank you for doing that. Um, all, so everyone here except Monica, because you had a conflict, um, and Ken Chambers has now participated <coughs> in some committee or review thing or whatever, which is great. So we are going to try and. No, I've been on. I've been on. I was on the first. Uh, oh, or new data management. Um, so uh, that's awesome. Now we're gonna. Uh, I w ideally, we'll work Ken in when we can, and we'll start the whole. Everybody participating as best as you can again. So that's really cool. Our participation in these things is really important. Um, did you have a quick yeah, question? Yeah, I'm going to ask uh, whether Nick was able, um, I don't know, you can disclose, but I was curious who the uh, five RMP responses were. Well. Yeah, good sure. It's uh, Northern California <coughs> Power Authority, or the Energy Authority. California Power, Power Association. Agency. 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 There you go. <laughs> NCPA, mm -hmm. uh, the, the Energy Authority, the Sacramento Municipal Utility District, Tenasca, and Direct Energy. Um, I have been trying to put Nick G here and Chuck, um, but Nick. It is looking like he has had a problem at his work and might not actually make it. Uh, I am still hoping Chuck is coming. Um, so we can run through really quick uh, the review of the agenda because there's really very few things on here, but a couple key things for us to do before the board meeting. And then we can do the um, election of the vice chair very last. I know you have a hard, oh, we're going to get any work just here. Um, so, uh, so we're going to move item five to the very end to, with the hopes that Nick G can be here for that vote. Um, the first is, uh, and actually Stephanie, so do you want to talk about this? About Bruce right. Johnson? Sure. Yeah. So um, we're just going to do very quickly a thank you for getting us to this point. And if you have any kind of things that you'd like to share with him, I know this has been a major project for him over the last three years. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Be nice to say some nice things to him and on wish Wednesday? him all his yes. Yeah. First, we're thanking him for all the work he's done to get us this point. Okay. Yeah. Vegan cupcakes. Vegan cupcakes. Yeah. All right. Wait, wait, are we vegan cupcakes? Yeah, like, we'll that's vegan. Vegan. <laughs> or you could sing him a song, you know. But yeah, you can submit anything. Are we a public comment or are we submitting things? If you would like to just say a comment as a group just for brevity, that would be great. If you guys um here, if you guys want to email me your comments, we can actually put them into a card and I can work on getting that together. Um and uh and and then we can we can thank you that way if you want. Um, somebody else is very welcome to try and draft a thank you statement. Does somebody want to take that on that isn't me? Awesome. <laughs> All right, then I volunteer to get that together. Um, but I do need your emails, and it's on Wednesday, so please do it by tomorrow, by 5-ish, five, five so I have time, if that would be cool. Um, all right, do that. Um, and... <laughs> Uh, so please do those things. Um, next CEO report. 
long list of items. I think the two most significant um, items that I was going to cover in the, in the CEO report are, um, one, our implementation plan was certified, which is a critical step. And, okay. Hmm. Right. Well, so that was the, that was the most significant one. Um, and I meant to get it in here, but I guess it didn't. Uh, well, we have, we're moving to uh, temporary office space in downtown Oakland. It's in there. It's in there. Yeah. Um, and yeah, no, but that's not the one. I, the, the one that I wanted to touch upon was phase, phase in, launch, uh -huh. right? And so we haven't had, you know, in our implementation plan, we said, let's push out when we're going to talk about launch, you know, our, what our phase in is going to be. We all, we all know we want to move more quickly than it was in the implementation plan. And so. We've been operating from a, sort of a, assessing sort of the financial viability and from sort of in, in interacting with all of our various contractors, operating under uh, sort of a scenario that we really want to launch both municipal and commercial industrial accounts, which is you know, 65 or, or more percent of our load on June 1st. Mm. So that would really, and then for residential, we won't make a final decision at this point. Let's focus on knocking out that one out of the park. Uh, but if ideally moving our residential up from January 1 to you know, call it October 1, thereabouts you may with residential because of the volume of accounts, you may want to do it over multiple months um, to, man to manage. Well, it's a, it's a single phase, but just your, to manage your mailing. So you might do it over September and October. Just got excited. If you're talking about like in 2018? Yeah. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. This is 2000. That was a happy voice. Okay, good. So this is a big item. This is not sort of a, we're not asking the board to say, yes, we shall do this. It's more like we are going to bring soon a recommendation with sort of a clear uh, justification really based on our cash flow and uh, our our ability to get to positive margin quickly is not surprisingly um, aided by launching more quickly. That's a technical question? Yeah. So, assuming that you, are, I mean, my understanding is that, that we have to meet the same local, the same resource advocacy yeah. part, which is departments which are due this month. That is, you're, you have to submit your plans to the Cali. So this month about what you're gonna have for RA, how do you, how, how will that happen if we don't exactly know what our load's going to be and, and you're not changing it? How are you going to adjust for that? So that's a qu that has been one of the discussion points with the five wholesale energy uh, vendors. And there's an update that we're going to be, I believe there's an update that we will be able to file in the spring with the, with the CPUC. Oh, okay. um, and that's the update for um, the, 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 the month ahead summer updates? Yeah, the, the system RA is a monthly update. The local RA, RA is an annual demonstration, but I didn't know that you could submit updates during the year. And as a load survey, as you take over load, there is an opportunity to make a showing. Okay. So one of the questions why, and why we haven't actually brought forward a recommendation is we don't have clear pricing yet. So yes, we have a pro forma that says you're, you will make a lot more. There's summer months, high, higher margin period you want to start serving your customers, but until we actually have a chance to test that, our pro forma against where are our local RA prices, if local RA prices are much higher, well then you might, that actually compresses margin. It, it may be from a margin standpoint, you're not as advantaged by moving quickly. And that's why we haven't actually come forward with a specific recommendation for time we want to actually have a more clear sense of what, where market pricing is. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. All right, um, I'm not sure if um, you so uh, will your plan include um, residential uh, opt-in, voluntary opt-in? We have discussed that, we, we haven't gotten to, yeah, because we're not, We've been thinking about this at a high, from a high cash flow level, not a, from the standpoint of what is our marketing plan, and that's 
think I there has been a, a lot of interest expressed in a limited opt-in. So that's something that we're, we will be evaluating as you know what are the challenges and opportunities associated with doing so. Um, My apologies for being late. The working day ran far longer than I would have planned. We're very glad you made it. So just to kind of go through the rest of this really quick, knowing the time, um, the there is an action item. Um, authorization to negotiate terms and contracts with River City Bank and Barclays Bank PLC for EBCE banking and credit services. Um, I was the CAC member that sat on that selection committee with these guys. Um, and do you want to give an uh, update on that? Sure. Um, so we're requesting approval to um, award uh, and sign an LOI with um, uh, one of the providers for the banking and deposit services vendor and then a credit facilities vendor. So for the banking deposit services, we are recommending, uh, I think, unanimously amongst the sort of panelists, uh, River City Bank. Um, and so, that, so they were amongst themselves and JP Morgan, there was two uh, proposals submitted for the banking deposit services. Um, and then on the credit facilities, there was uh, proposals received from JP Morgan, Barclays, and River City Bank uh, to a sort of a lesser degree with more limited facility size. And we're uh, recommending awarding Barclays on that uh, for a facility of up to $60 million, um, which can be collateralized or uncollateralized, which is a significant uh, uh, sort of characteristic of that offering, which is a sign of flexibility. Where is River City Bank? They are based in uh, Sacramento. Sacramento area, yeah. And their closest uh, branch is in Walnut Creek. And we did ask about local build out on that front with a mediocre but sounding realistic answer. I mean, oh, yeah. Yeah. you mean like? Having a branch here, but they're doing—they mostly do. It would be the deposit services, so it's—it's it's not really like a thing that people walk into. Um, it would, but it would handle all of the transactions from all of our Alameda customers, and it is the most local bank that applied. Yeah. So, as I don't think I vote on this one because I'm part of the committee, or do I? Like if there's, all right. So um, does somebody want to make a recommendation on supporting or denying or abstaining on this particular item? Because we should bring a recommendation to the board. Oh, is there any public comment on this? Oh, yeah, public comment. Sorry, go for it. I have questions. Great. Just because I, I'm sorry I'm reading this right now, but so there's two recommendations. One is for basically banking services as with River City Bank. What is what are the um, what are the what's the annual cost for those banking services? So uh, we receive um, sort of example costs from River City Bank and JP Morgan. It's sort of hard to really mm -hmm. estimate that because they do it on such a sort of nominal basis on like ACH transactions that you have. Mm -hmm. it, um, it did come across um, competitively versus JP Morgan's. Like I can, so I can no, pull like up. An annual setup fee it's not like an annual fee. setup fee because so it's, it's really volume based. Um, but the fees end up being fairly nominal for those services. And then for Barclays Bank. You're asking for, they will provide a, uh, some kind of letter of credit or some kind of line of credit? It's a revolving credit facility, so basically, credit. yeah. And so it's up to $60 million that we can choose to put a facility for. We might choose to do something at a smaller amount just so we can less the fees. And does that LLC cost us any money? Yeah, there's there's certain like undrawn commitment fees and then drawn commitment fees. So that's why, depending on the facility size, uh -huh. if we don't need it, we'd rather downsize it. And this was, and these were selected based on RFP. That's right. With pretty substantial, like I, I recommended banks that they reached out to, and like there was some 
there was decent outreach on that to try and get local, uh, to the point that even Barclays, because they don't do deposits, um, tried to partner with local banks, even up to the point that they walked through the door to do it, but they couldn't, they couldn't find somebody who could actually do it. Um, River City has, um, because they've been doing it with a bunch of CCAs, they actually have this process down pretty well. Um, and we're the only people who actually even understood one of the questions on the well, this, which was pretty funny. Um, I mean, I didn't understand it entirely, but they did. Um, and uh, then the line of credit is, uh, they charge us a percentage uh, based off what we ask for, um, whether or not we draw it out. And so we can ask for a smaller amount, but always increase. So for the, for the 60 million, is that enough to cover all of the different collateral requirements we have with that Cali Sun has a requirement. So, yes. So that's that's one of the attract that's one of the attractions of Barclays versus River City. River City only is offering us a, a facility of up to 30 million. 30 million. Uh -huh. And when you talk about all the collateral requirements, if we had no credit support from our wholesale energy suppliers, um, you know, you it's between 40 and 50 million dollars is the credit need for that you know, intervening period before you start generating revenue. Now, some of the wholesale energy service providers that we're evaluating are offering a variety of credit solutions. So for instance, direct energy is, a, is um, uh, suggesting uh, is two month payment terms on all the uh, collateral requirements. So CalISO collateral and supplier collateral. So they would basically cover that, float it to us for two months, and then you know, that would basically match up. So in that, if you were to pick somebody like that, you actually wouldn't need as large a facility from Barclays. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to maximum degree possible match up the selection, start negotiating with Barclays, and also get to the selection of wholesale energy so that we'll, when we're really in the weeds with Barclays, we know that we're going with any, on the wholesale energy side that has a credit solution, mm -hmm. and then you basically compare interest rates. Direct costs four percent. Barclays costs three percent. So worst case, if you get no support from any of the other sixty million, is enough to cover your yes. requirements. Yes. Yep. Um, we got a second. Go for it, Jessica. Cool. Um, so some of the issues that came up um, from the East Bank and Power Alliance were issues around um, what kind of labor practices um, these banks credit service company. Um, have also what kind of fossil fuel investments they would have. Specifically, there was some concerns around the tar sands. Um, so I wanted to pose that question. I'm sure it had come up, but I'd like to hear more about that. And then um, this was an example of also um, concerns around East Bay Clean Power Alliance would have liked to have some input in the RFP uh, process um, and last but not, not least I will address it here and I should have earlier but that folks would like to see that RFP processes agendized um, in the next mm -hmm. a process okay. and then I can address that but that was actually, oh. I, in fact, what I was doing to say was I appreciate that that question did clearly get asked of the River City Bank because it's in the report that they have limited fossil fuel and in fact the one con they do have a contract with uh, Shell North America, which of course we wish they didn't have, but I don't know that they did how many sell. <laughs> anyway, I appreciate that that question was asked. I don't know if it was also Put it, the and put the it was. <coughs> um, so I, I was the one that anchored those questions um, and uh, on both the labor and the environmental front. And so um, the environmental front, um, uh, River City very clearly said, we have one $5 million bond with this company. Wait, can tell it. Like, like, this thing is not important to us. We're like, all right. Um, J.P. Morgan Chase claims they have no investments whatsoever in anything fossil fuel related. Um, and investments are very kind of. Uh, 
Um, it's, it's very, it's very questionable. Um, the, so there's different types of ways that you could have phrased that, perhaps. Um, and then uh, Barclays said, when different, like because they're a they're a London-based company, um, and I actually used to work right near their office, so they have a really good reputation for um, labor and community um, in the way that they interact. Like they're pretty well loved by some of the more uh, like women, global women strike and legally for women and that kind of stuff actually like their practices, at least they did years ago. Um, so that could have changed because it's, they're global, so they're probably terrible somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but the, on the environmental thing, they were, they were very upfront and very clear and said, when companies need to raise money, like that is where we would interact with them on that front, and that's where our interactions are um, on an international sort of scale. So they even acknowledged what their things were, um, and were the one that was large enough to actually provide us the resources we needed to be able to create our programs. Um, and that honesty and transparency was important to me. Um, Are there other questions? All right, so is there a motion to, is there a motion? And the approval of staff's recommendation. Is there a second? Second. All right, all in favor, show of hands. Opposed, abstention, passes unanimously. Um, awesome. I'm keeping notes of who's speaking to if it's helpful. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> all right. So going to our last, um, our last, uh, our agenda item before announcements and adjournment, um, we have received a, a letter from our uh, fellow board member that he is um, unable to make it to the meetings on time. So can't and would not be able to make it to the board meetings. Period. Um, so is unable to fulfill his duties as vice chair. Um, I am going to ask each of you individually if you would be willing to make the time commitment. I set out a description of that. Um, and, uh, oh, or like, I asked for self-nominations and I had to tell you there haven't been a lot of them. So, um, but some people were considering it. Um, and I haven't been able to talk to everybody yet. So, um, uh, Subin, would you consider being vice chair? I would not. Monica. Cynthia? Perhaps. And? I mean, uh, perhaps lower. <laughs> 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 yes. Perhaps. Yes. Okay. So, um, the way that we did the uh, initial chair elections was not right. We were actually supposed to stay in the room, <laughs> turns out. Um, but because it's, it's public, and so we were supposed to be public about it. Um, <laughs> but it was our first meeting, and none of us have ever done this before. So hey, what do you do? Um, so, uh, so there's four of you that have said perhaps or yes. Um, does anyone, like, do you guys have a process comment, like, thought for this right here? You want to nominate someone? Well, I mean, we're asking for, we're asking for self-nominations. That sounded like well, that. I still have from you. Yeah. 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 yeah, I think it's pretty clear. <laughs> 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 All right. Would somebody like to nominate? Yeah, I know. Change your answer. answer. See what you walked into? If you want to change your answer. Which, which is, and you are familiar with the amount of time that it takes and that you need to start attending all of the board meetings um, to become familiar with the process that is happening there and doing all that stuff and then helping me with the outside work. Yes to all these things. So I will, uh, I, so, so that you know what you're getting into. Um, I am occasionally called upon to travel for business, sometimes internationally. So I've already missed a meeting because I was in Europe. Um, uh, today, I have my global business director from Europe here. I had been scheduled past 5 p.m., but the meeting became late and became dinner, and so I'm late tonight. I can't promise that kind of thing won't happen in the future. I may miss some meetings. 
but uh, I'm passionate about what this group is about. I'm very proud of what all of you have brought to the table. And, uh, and Olivia needs help. Uh, so, uh, that's what I want. All right. Is there any opposition to the only enthusiastic self nomination? <laughs> oh, was enthusiastic? <laughs> we, we will need to take a vote. Um, yeah. I just um, do we have a um, and maybe we did have it before. I can't uh, remember. Um, do we have a description of what the vice chairs do? I sent out an email that says this is what we have been doing up to this point. Um, and because it's a new body, um, this is what I have been doing. My concern actually is that you aren't available during work hours, and there's actually quite a lot that happens during work hours. Very important. Yes, I am I'm essentially never available uh, nine to nine five, but if you're fine. So that was my only concern, but our meetings really happen in the evening, and I and keep doing the daytime stuff. Uh, so. Um, I guess, when did you send that email? Or was it Tuesday? Or was it, I don't think I get any of your emails. I don't email anybody. I go through there. Or, or I BCC everybody or something. Which email is this? The one that said we're looking for nominations. Yes, for November 7th. It was in response to Nick's email to us saying that he couldn't serve. Yes. Oh, so we should fix that. I, I, I missed a lot of emails, I think. So they sent to Stephanie and then BCC everybody else? Yes. So if Nick resigned on the 6th, this came like the next day? Yeah. It was on the November 7th. That's right. Yeah, I that. So. Oh, we'll fix this. Um, I can re forward it to you. That's Subject line great. vice chair position. Okay. So it's. Yeah. Um, oh. I think it's because Nick's original email, I don't think he had everyone's email addresses. So if you replied, I said that it didn't include it. Uh, uh, oh. I just resent it to you. Um, is that something that would, do? does anyone feel concerned on voting to, does that raise concerns for moving forward? <coughs> so I'm ready to just what, provide them those. What aspect do you Oh, not having seen the description of the vice. No, I just, I just want to make sure that. You know, okay. Then I'll move to that we elect um, Chuck as our vice. And I'll second. Okay. Okay. So All in favor? Show your hands. All right. Do vote yes, no, abstain. Yes. <laughs> 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 oh, I. Uh, uh, yield to the majority. <laughs> 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 All right. Sorry, what that abstention? <laughs> That's pretty awesome. All right. So thank you. Thank you. Um, you missed at the beginning of the meeting that we're going to be doing some trainings on how to write board letters and those kinds of things. Um, anybody is welcome to do those things. Please do do them in case we need pitch hitters. Um, and that's awesome. When is that? Uh, we don't know yet, but we're going to let you know. And things will always get weird around the holidays. Uh, do we have uh, committee member or staff announcements? Please come Thursday night and Friday daytime to the Clean Power Healthy Communities uh, workshops and conferences and stuff. This is important business, and it actually affects you. Um, like a lot. Anyone else? Is that a public event? Question, is that a public uh, invite? It's a register in the Yeah, you yeah. register this. There's a, yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Deepest, deepest gratitude <laughs> for you. us thank being for here. Coming. Great um, yeah, thank you for coming. I'm actually a little bit sad that we didn't have you guys at the table. Uh, thank you for being here. You're welcome. And uh, we are going to adjourn on December 4th. Will we have our new office at that point? Yes. Um, How about downtown? Uh, well, so the thing is, 
these, these out here are very difficult for our fellow committee member. Um, and right, the idea, the idea is to move it around. Um, we can't do it at the other office because you won't be there anymore, but also because they have a hard shut time. So, the down, as long as we're there, it is an open welcome to host, yes. but obviously, you know, it's up to the group, but we are able to host. At the office. And our part is in front of Bart. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. Like at the front of Bart, basically. Yeah, we see this like these children. Do you have any more pieces and bosses in that building? No, 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 no. We, we aren't going to do that. That would be, we don't want to make it open central, like quite specifically. Um, but if we do this next one on December 4th, that'll give me a month to find something back on the other side. Um, so, like, probably in Dublin or Livermore or something like that. Um, so, uh, it needs to be accessible. It's a big city. It needs to be accessible by Barbara. I'm uh, we're, yeah, we're working on that. So, um, all right, so we are going to adjourn to Wednesday, December 4th at 7 p.m. at our new office in the Hill Center. Thanks. I will not be with you, but Chuck will be running things right now.